Hello again. We're back at the soldering station today, and this time we have a electronic trinket that I uh, pulled out of the trash somewhere. This is a RF cavity filter for uh, early microwave frequency filtering. This uh, does a range of 250 megahertz up to 1 gigahertz as its center filter frequency. I've uh, already removed most of the screws here, so we can just pull this apart and take a look inside real quick. So, opening up the cover, you can see they made this out of metal, presumably as some sort of uh, additional shielding. And then we pull out the actual cavity filter, move away the bottom of the metal case. And the actual cavity filter is a copper cylinder with end connectors on the sides and a brass back plate and a brass front plate and then a dial that will adjust the cavity size in order to change the resonant frequency. So if we pull the back plate off, and I've already moved the screws so that we can do this quickly, and look inside, we see that there's a, a disc inside the cavity filter, and if we twist the dial, the disc will move in and out to change the resonant frequency there. Then you can see the feeds in there, and towards the top of the screen you see one of them. It's just the end connector coax with a see if I can get it to focus, a wire loop that goes from the center conductor to the shield, and the shield is connected to the outside of this cavity here. So, I know what you're all waiting for, you want to see it work. So on the bench I have a Nano VNA, which is a cheap hobbyist grade vector network analyzer that will allow us to do frequency sweeps from 100 kilohertz, I think some people have pushed it down to 50, up to 900 megahertz stock. Some people have pushed it up to, I've heard as high as 1.5 gigahertz with custom firmware, but you'll lose accuracy. And I've already pre-calibrated that. So as I'm talking right now, I'm putting in the screws so that we can have this thing back in one piece in order to use it. Uh, if you know anything about the Nano VNA, you know it has SMA connectors and comes with some SMA coax to use. We're going to have to adapt that to the end connectors, so I have two adapters right here. These go from the the end to an SMA female for me. And we'll just close this thing back up. So next we want to verify our calibration. Now I did this off camera, I did a uh, salt calibration. So we'll just, uh, we'll move the camera down further so that you guys can see up close what's going on with the cavity filter and what's going on with the Nano VNA. So here is the Nano VNA. We'll turn that light away so we don't get as much glare. And we can see the green line is the impedance. Uh, right now I have the two terminals shorted together, so we should have a 50 ohm impedance, which would mean we're normalized. We should just see a dot across the entire frequency sweep in the center of the circle, which means 50 ohms. We see a green dot, so that's good. The yellow line is the SWR, which, because we're connected from one terminal to the other and we've calibrated out the lines and the connectors there, we should pretty much see one across the whole range, and we're seeing a line at the bottom, which is one for the yellow, good. And the attenuation, the magnitude of the power getting from port 0 to port 1 in this case, the, uh, our S21 as a log mag plot, should just be 0 the whole way, meaning no attenuation because we're not accounting for the, or we've already accounted for the attenuation in this coaxial cable and the connector there. And we see minus 0.19 dB, so that's pretty well calibrated, I'd say, at least for a hobbyist grade piece of equipment. Now. The calibration kit that comes with the Nano VNA relies on the use of this female SMA connector right here, but we're not going to be using that SMA connector when we're characterizing the filter, so that will be a source of error here, but we're just trying to get a rough measurement and see this device work. We're not trying to make a precision RF measurement and then draw major design conclusions about that. We're just fooling around here. So if I can get it to focus on the dial, you should probably be able to see it's at about 7, let's go to 750 megahertz. And now we'll look for the, uh, the peak on the blue, which is the magnitude. So where does the most RF get through? And you can see right now it's 750 megahertz, 747 megahertz on here. We get minus 20 dB, and that's our peak in the blue. And then if we go off to the side, about 10 dB, that's uh, 738 right there. Might be kind of difficult to read through the camera. Uh, we're seeing about mm, minus 33 dB, so that's about 10 dB attenuation for going off of the center frequency by almost 10 megahertz. And we can go even further, and of course the amplitude will decrease, 
Uh, the SWR at the center frequency, we're seeing a minus 20. You can see it's not exactly matched. Uh, it tells us the impedance, and it's saying that it's 103 ohms and 8, 9 nanohenries of inductance. And the SWR is like 2.5. So that is the center of the filter, but it's not exactly uh, matched to the impedance that we want it to be through there. Now we can try uh, a lower frequency. 750 is really towards the upper upper range. See if I turn this dial in, that the peak will move down. What's interesting is the the green line, right? The green line doesn't really move all that much. The, the cavity filter kind of has impedance that it has across the frequency range. And we see the same thing with the SWR, but the actual peak where it allows the most RF energy through does move by turning the cavity filter dial. I haven't done much direct research with cavity filters, so I couldn't give a great reason why, but I thought that was a cool observation. That's about all there is to it, to this uh, RF cavity filter. If you wanted to actually use it, you'd probably want to find out what the impedance is on that green line on the Smith chart at your desired frequency and design a matching network. And then uh, your matching network should be able to handle reasonably high power. Uh, and, and you wouldn't have to then design a notch filter. You could instead just design a L matching network that's a higher or low pass filter and match the impedance at your desired frequency. And then this, this can handle pretty considerable amounts of power. There's not really much to uh, uh, blow up here, uh, like components and whatnot. So you could run this as a high power notch filter and then do the impedance matching with simpler networks. That would be an interesting project idea. Maybe something I will do in the future. So that's about all there is to it. See you guys next time.